Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. In today's lecture, we finally starting off with the ratio analysis part. Previously, we have talked about income statement, we have talked about statement of financial position, we have talked about the published accounts, and now as we have seen income statement and statement of financial position, they show some part of data, but you can't easily assess that data properly. Like, okay, there's a business that makes a fifty dollars retained, fifty dollars profit after tax net operating profit after tax and there's a uh, 50 dollars 50 million dollars okay and there's a business which makes 500 million dollars now you can't say one business is more better than that unless you see the total or compare that data with some other data so you can use profitability ratios for that okay if you see that okay one business has a lot of has a l high a greater number of total assets as com a greater number of current assets as compared to its current liabilities then that means it will have a greater working capital but that, that 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 does not necessarily mean that it is a better business because perhaps that most of those current assets are inventories and inventories take time to be converted into your ready ca readily c be converted to cash okay since we have talked about that working capital cycle so that's why that's where this ratio analysis comes in and helps you to analyze the financial performance more accurately and give a more you know reasonable measure for performance so let's see it is a technique for analyzing a business's financial performance by comparing one piece of accounting information with another so we just don't look at one information we compare that with some other information hence this is a comp comprehensive tool used by businesses to assess compare and measure the performance of the business over a period of time and it could also be used to measure the performance compare the performance with other comparators known as your inter-firm comparison now ratio analysis is that it compares two pieces of financial information by comparing two pieces of data in this way it is possible to make more informed judgments about a business's business performance so if you have if you make comparisons you can have a better informed decision informed judgments as we'll see later on there are a large number of financial ratios that stakeholders can use we shall consider two groups of ratios only in this chapter that are your liquidity ratios and profitability ratios there are in total actually five groups of ratios but for AS level we only look at this liquidity ratios and your profitability ratios and liquidity ratios will look at current ratio and quick ratio and profitability ratios will look at your gross profit margin and your operating margin or your net profit margin so let's go liquidity ratios these measure a company's ability to pay its short-term debts okay so liquidity what was liquidity the was it was about paying you your short-term debts so that's how this whole that's why liquidity ratios measure that ability to pay its short-term debts okay if the business is able to pay its short-term debts or not how much that is like we have to see if you remember you call earlier we have talked about that even a profitable business can have cash flow crisis as it might not have enough cash in hand to pay its short-term debts because of which it can fail and it might have to discontinue its operation so that's why we need to have a good measure of liquidity as well and we use liquidity ratios to measure that it is concerned with the working capital of the business rather than profits okay we don't look at the profitability of the business we look at the working capital of the business we look at how much cash the business has in hand to pay for its current liabilities it measures the liquid assets it measures liquid assets held by a firm that is your cash and other assets such as receivables that are easily convertible into cash okay so that those are your liquid assets and the value of these assets is then compared with the short term debts or liabilities the business have will have to pay so that's why you how you compare your liquid assets with your current liabilities short term liabilities to see the current situation of the business therefore stakeholders may evaluate whether the business performance may be harmed as a result of liquidity problems as we said that if the business does not have enough cash to pay for its short term debts then it might have to you know take loans or something do something else to pay for its short term liability and it could harm its potential profits as well later on suppliers are likely to be interested in liquidity issues as well as they indicate the ability to pay money okay so suppliers will also see how much good the liquidity ratios are if they are good enough that the business can pay it in the short time or not because suppliers also want their money to be repaid within a certain period of time which is generally a lot com comparatively less let's say maximum up to suppliers generally give a maximum 
up to month but generally it's like hardly a week or two weeks okay i want my payment back in two weeks so that's how things work now let's look at the two liquidity ratios we discussed those are current ratio and your asset test ratio or quick ratio we use both of those terms but i'll just go with quick ratio since you have, don't have to use asset test like you know it's just more convenient current ratio it measures a company's ability to pay off its current liabilities with its total current assets such as cash accounts receivables and inventory okay just a little mistake over here all sorted out now so as the name suggests current ratio okay the name in itself just gives you tells you that its current ratio is all about your current liabilities and your current assets it tells you if the business is able to pay off its current liabilities using its current assets how much does the business have the ratio of that assets and liabilities so current ratio is equal to current assets divided by your current liabilities okay so current assets upon current liabilities gives you your current ratio it is expressed in the form of ratio we don't just say we just give an answer like say 200 current assets the value of current assets is 200 and the value of current liabilities is 100 so 200 divided by 100 will be 2 but if we don't just try 2 we express in the form of ratio like 2 ratio 1 this would mean that the company will has just two dollars of current assets for each one dollar of its current liability so for each two dollar of current asset the business has to pay one dollar of current liability and that is a pretty good ratio you can say since you know okay we have good enough ratio to pay off our debts we have enough assets to cover up for our liabilities so it's a pretty good business it's a pretty liquid business okay the liquidity is all good using this if you have this particular ratio so generally 1.5 to 2.0 is recommended previously we just said that anything greater than 2 was ok but then after certain after certain time period we said oh, no we just a better ratio current ratio is between 1.5 to 2.0 because if you have greater than 2.0 then that was not a good thing and less than 1.5 is also not a good thing so the normal recommended figure is this but this would also vary according to the type of business and the state of the market state of the market of course it depends if the market is if if it's like you know recession in economy then businesses might not have a good current ratio but as opposed to like a good time in market where there's a seasonal increase in demand so you have a generally high current ratio okay and also the type of the business of course and of course by the time you just see your current ratio so the type of the business oh, sorry the type of the business what do i mean by the type of business generally i will mean that your that some businesses it's better to have a lower ratio like to generally have a low ratio but some businesses don't have low ratio they have high ratios and like high ratio i mean just 2.0 not to greater than 2.0 is not a good thing as well so while a ra low ratio may indicate the business has liquidity problems okay so if you have a less than one that means okay you are in a severe liquidity crisis you need to you know, get some cash quickly to pay off your debts and you are in quite a liquidity crisis even if you're profitable business then that's not a good thing your stakeholders your shareholders will be worried and they will probably sell off their shares if they see such a value and on the other side if you have a high ratio such, such as 3 ratio 1 which is greater than 2 ratio 1 the maximum amount that we wanted it indicates that too many funds are tied up in unprofitable inventories so you're not just using that assets properly you are just the all your funds are tied up in your inventories most probably your trade receivables or cash or perhaps it could if it that's not the case then that will it could be that the business might have large holdings of inventory some of which might be obsolete so if you have obsolete inventory that that means that's just not a good thing as well since it won't be able to be converted into cash so therefore it will be better placed in more profitable assets such as equipment to increase efficiency so instead of having those if you have a high ratio instead of having that fund that amount of money tied up in your inventory trade receivables and cash etc you can use that cash to purchase some other equipment etc which you can be you know to increase your non-current assets okay you just convert some of your current assets into your non-current assets by purchasing equipment etc and that will not just increase your non-current assets for and help you in future if you need it but it also provides you with certain 
benefits like having extra equipment would mean that you your efficiency will increase the efficiency of operations will increase and the sales will also increase probably so yeah you, you need to you could just use that funds for something profitable for profitable assets like your non current assets firms can improve your current ratio current ratio by raising more cash through the sale of non current assets or negotiating long term loans so if you can just negotiate your suppliers for for negotiate banks for long term loans you can just have that current ratio increased why long term loans will increase the ratio because you have the cash in hand and you have to repay that back after more than one year so that's why it's will not be included into your current liabilities it will be included into your non current liabilities which you don't look at over here so that's how your current ratio will improve and you can also sell your non current assets by and if you sell your non current assets you will have cash in hand and cash in hand is your current assets so that's how you can improve your current ratio now when i was saying about the type of the business we look at the type of the business along with quick ratio so you have you know you can save some at the extra discussion so type of business mainly i mean is retailer business and your manufacturing business retailer business would generally have low ratios not retailer and that sorry i look at that we look at that in quick ratios now we are done with the current ratio it was all about your current assets and current liabilities and how we use it was that it should be between 1.5 to 2.0 and uh, if it's greater than that, that it probably means that you're not using your assets wisely so you should invest in that in some profitable assets like convert into your purchase some equipment etc that are your non current assets so that your profitability can increase by improving improving your efficiency now asset to cash ratio is a more accurate measure since current ratio also includes the current ratio includes your current assets and current assets include inventories as well so what if you just in exclude inventories and why would we do why would we want to exclude in inventories let's see that asset to cash ratio measures a company's ability to meet its short term obligations with its most liquid assets and therefore excludes inventories from its current assets so the formula is quick ratio is equal to current assets minus inventories and then divided by current liabilities we don't include inventories in this ratio why is that inventories are basically the least liquid assets and they consume the largest period of time to get converted into cash even if inventory consists of finished goods it can take time to sell so that's why it's not a liquid asset it takes like it's the least liquid asset it takes a lot of time to be converted into cash like there you remember the working capital cycle the time it takes the business to come back to the business first you have to purchase your supplies then that supplies will be processed and then you will sell it to the, your com- your customers and then customers will pay after some time because of your c- credit purchases so after it takes a long time for that cash to come back into the business for of inventory so that's why we just exclude that because we might we and if we exclude the inventories we can have a uh, look at a more short term lo- look at the business liquidity okay we have a quick short term look at the business liquidity like a two months probably so like how much the business has enough cash in hand to pay for its liquidity within the t- pay for its short term debts within two months or something so it provides a more accurate indication of a firm's liquidity than current ratio since we just remove our inventories as it takes time for inventories to be sold and processed and all inventories remember it consists of your finished goods as well as your raw materials but both cases it takes times raw materials will take more time as compared to finished goods but the main idea is that it takes time to be converted into cash so that's why we are just excluding that from our ratio and hence we have our quick ratio now using quick ratio generally normal recommended figures would be 1 to 1 but businesses with 0.7 to 1 have also operated successfully in recent years and they are a lot of points over here i've written down and sorry we're just a little low on time so basic idea is that if you just you know you change current ratio if you just subtract and inventories then probably our quick ratio will be less than current ratio but if it's a uh, quite less then probably that means that and a big drop from ra- quick ra- current ratio to quick ratio is expected with businesses dealing with mainly finished goods such as retailers but alarming for manufacturing business retailers because of course they have finished goods available they have c- cash purchases etc 
So sorry, it's just a little low on time. So we'll discuss this for point of using quick ratio in the next lecture. We'll pick up from here and then move on to profitability ratios. Thanks for watching and Allah Hafiz.